This is the Tom Bigby Tales, and I'm your host, Shannon Evans. I write about a small town in northeast Mississippi called Columbus that lies on the Tom Bigby River. I also sometimes write about the rest of the state. Today's episode is the Mason Frierson Gaston Frazier home. I thought I'd return to a little bit of history and take a break from politics. Columbus, Mississippi is a small town on the banks of the Tombigbee River. It is a small town, yet it has a big heart. It boasts a small liberal arts college, Mississippi University for Women, also referred to as the W, as well as roughly 700 historic properties and 25 national register properties. It is oozing with classic Southern architecture and is the home of the unique local Columbus eclectic styling of some of its antebellum homes. Some of the homes are opened each spring by the historic home tours who host the annual Columbus pilgrimage, a tradition in the town since 1940. This year, the pilgrimage will be April 2nd through the 13th. One of these homes, currently not on tour, the Fraser home, sits on 4th Avenue South, high on a bluff overlooking the river. The Fraser home was designed by architect James Lull. Lull designed several homes in Columbus, including the Harrison Johnston home, Whitehall, Wisteria Place, and his own home, Camellia Place. Lull is also responsible for the 1947 portion of the Columbus Lowndes County Courthouse and the, ver- and the early First Baptist Church building begun in 1935. Lola first arrived in Columbus around 1835 from Vermont. He brought the Greek Revival architectural style to Columbus. His style is what is now referred to often as Columbus Eclectic, as well as another local builder who was last, whose last name was O'Neill. Lull is buried in Friendship Cemetery, her find a grave, in one of the Oddfellow rings. His grave is marked by a sizable 12-foot obelisk, and the legend has it that the house once faced the river and was turned by a team of oxen to face the street. Is that true, or is that a tall tale? To find out, I did a ton of background research. The Fraser home is built on land that was first gained under a land grant patent by William L. Moore. The grand was the, the land grant is dated April first, eighteen twenty nine. Lot number five is designated by the city survey, was transformed at some point prior to 1836 and to and transferred to a man named Henry Hunt, who sold the property to Daniel Baldwin, deed book 6-345. Edwin Beverly Mason then acquired the land that same year, and it is believed to have been the one, he is believed to be the one to hire Lull to design his home. There's no formal document that records this transaction as plans were not required to be filed at that point in Columbus history. The home is built in a generous four over four plan with eight original fireplaces and four large brick chimneys. There was a generous outdoor kitchen, an herb garden, and other outbuildings and gardens as well. Most of these outbuildings are no longer in existence and built over. Mason was a planter of some repute who first appears in Lowndes County Census in 1830 as a planter. Edwin, often referred to in in documents as E.B., was born in Mecklenburg County, Virginia. He is found again on the 1850 census in Lowndes County as a planter and owns a sizable property with his wife, Margaret Maria Fluitt Witherspoon Mason, and their six children. One of the children, Louisa, was his stepchild, as Margaret was a widow when they married in October of 1843. The first bridge across the Tom Bigby was built in front of the home by Horace King, an enslaved architect who would later earn his freedom to prevent his owner's competitors from taking him into their business. I've previously done an episode on Horace King, the bridge builder. This bridge was a covered bridge wide enough for for a walkover or a team and wagon to cross. This made access to the prairie and back to Columbus a faster and safer event. The remains of the bridge are still evident on the hillside in front of the house. But was the house turned to face what was eventually labeled Bridge Street? 
Well, by the 1870 census, E.B. is listed as a cornice maker and his son is listed as a plasterer. The 1870 map of Columbus shows the house front facing the river. Was that a, a design flaw of the person who uh, designed the map? Was the house turned or did they just wrap the porch further around the house at that point? We don't know. E.B. died on May 3rd, 1871 in New Orleans, Louisiana, and is buried in Friendship Cemetery in Columbus, per find a grave. His wife, Margaret Mason, inherited the home from her husband, according to the Mississippi Wills in the Lowndes County Courthouse. Margaret Mason was born in 1818 in South Carolina, per an 1830 census. Her parents were wealthy landowners in Williamsburg County, South Carolina. She first married James Van Tromp, Witherspoon in South Carolina, and by 1837, they are listed in a census index for both present-day Lowndes County and Clay County with South Carolina marriage records. Witherspoon died in April of 1842, leaving Margaret alone with a small child. Her husband, James, was buried in the Cannon Cemetery in Clay County. Margaret at some point leaves their home on 4th Avenue and moves in with her daughter on 3rd Avenue South, buying a home for Louisa Witherspoon Frierson and her husband sometime around 1900. There she remains with her children, Louisa, and her husband now, <coughs> her husband, Louisa's husband, Alexander Frierson, and their adult children, Charles, who has a wife, Hattie, George, and Reese Fryer. <clears throat> Alexander Frierson is a cotton broker, and his sons work for him in the family business. Alexander Frierson died in 1901, and Charles is now the head of the household. Margaret <clears throat> Witherspoon <clears throat> Mason, excuse me, remains in the Frierson home with her with her in laws and her daughter until her death in 1908. She is buried at Friendship Cemetery in Columbus. At her death, she leaves her prop property equally, a house on 4th Avenue, to her daughters, which is in a probated will dated 21 July 1908 in the Lowndes County Courthouse. Louisa, now widowed, moves into the home on 4th Avenue overlooking the river after her mother's death with her children and her son Charles and his wife Hattie. Um, Hattie's Full name is Margaret Waters, and he had married her in Missouri in 1898. In 1909, we know that Charles borrows money using the house on 4th as collateral per the deed book 9495 at the Lowndes County Courthouse. Charles and Hattie established quite the name for themselves after they've renovated the home and they begin entertaining there. They and their home are the social hit of the community through the early 1920s hosting elaborate dinner parties, women's socials, wedding receptions for family and friends, and political party events with local and significant state candidates, per articles in the Commercial Dispatch, the local Columbus paper. By 1912, Charles's brother George has moved out of the house and expanded their family business, Frierson Brothers, into Ada, Oklahoma, per another Commercial Dispatch article. Charles is noted in multiple news articles for going to help his brother do business there and taking his wife and children, Charles Jr. and little Louisa, with him on the train. Rumors have circulated that the house is was turned by teams of oxen at some point, so their homes face so the so that the home faces the street now. While this is a fun story, it's not practical nor provable. An event of this magnitude would have been covered in local newspapers, if not in newspapers much further afield. There is absolutely no evidence in news indexes that this event ever occurred. The engineering impossibility based on the size of the house, the location and condition of the four chimneys, and the slope of the property makes this tale rather unfeasible. What is more likely and is evidenced by the 1875 map of Columbus homes and the current offset front porch is that there once was a wraparound porch on three sides of the house, and for whatever reason, the river-facing side of the house no longer has that porch line. Perhaps the windows were once jib windows. It's not clear at this point based on these windows. What is clear 
is that at some point, a new roof with wider overhang and new soffits were placed on the house directly over the existing Federalist-era roof. The original front porch, before becoming a wraparound, was probably a simple one-third or three-quarter porch popular in the late um, in the early 1830s when the home was built. The most prolific teller of the tale of the turned house was little Louisa Frierson, who was 13 years old when she moved away from Columbus with her family to New Orleans. She told of this, quote, memory while in her late 80s on a Columbus visit, after which she would laugh expansively. Perhaps she was telling a tall tale to an eager audience. Perhaps she misremembered. She died in 1995 at the age of 90. But back to the home. In 1919, the Mason heirs sold the house to Ira Lafayette Gaston and his wife, Mary Mamie Long Gaston, per the deed books in the Lowndes County Library. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in the Lowndes County Courthouse. Charles Frierson and his wife and children um, moved to New Orleans, where he continues to work as a cotton broker. That family lives in, in a home in the 14th Ward on State Street, and Charles would retire there in 1830 and die at the age of 70 after a short illness in April of 1938. He was returned home to Columbus and buried in Plot 138 of Friendship Tim Cemetery. His wife, Harriet, is buried next to him much later in 1965. The Gaston family had already moved in the house by 1918, and Ira originally from Enterprise, Mississippi, was a hard-working, well-respected banker in Columbus. He married Mamie Long Davis at St. Paul's Episcopal Church while he was working at the First Bank of Columbus as an assistant cashier, according to a wedding announcement in the Commercial Dispatch in November of 1909. They moved into the Victorian home first of her parents, the D.P. Davis home on 3rd Street South. His father was the secretary of IINC, which would later become Mississippi State College for Women and currently MUW. He was a member of the board for the bank that also employ employed his son. Ira and Mamie would then go on and have two children, Regina and Chester Davis. In the 1928 city directory, Mamie Gaston is listed as secretary treasurer of the L.J. Frank and Company Insurance Agency, whose office just also happens to be listed as in her home on 4th Avenue South. By 1930, Ira is the vice president of First Bank and secretary of Mississippi State College for Women. Per the 1940 census, the Gaston's daughter, Regina Anderson, who has previously been married, is now a divorcee, a scandalous affair, and she and her six-year-old son, Bond, move back in the home <clears throat> on the river on 4th Avenue South. Their son, Chester, is also living at home while practicing law in Columbus. Chester leaves sometime in 1942 for Mariana, Florida, to join the Army Air Corps pilot training program, per a newspaper article in the Commercial Dispatch. After a career in banking, <clears throat> the senior, Gaston, <clears throat> retires from banking, semi-retires, and in 1950, he is listed as the city directory uh, in the city directory as an insurance agent, where he served as the president of the Northeast Mississippi Insurance Agents Association. His obituary in the commercial dispatch portrays him as an active member and past president of the Kiwanis Club and a senior warden at St. Paul's Episcopal Church. He died on April 9, 1950, and is buried at Friendship Cemetery. His wife, Mamie, remains into, in the house until it is sold in 1966 to Jay Frazier and wife. Mamie then lives with her son, Chester, now a retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel, until her death in 1972, and Chester dies a year later in 1973, Regina continues on and dies in 1997, and all are buried at Friendship Cemetery. Thus goes the Gaston family. The Fraser family that has held the property from 1966 until currently have never been able to definitively prove the house was never spun, was ever spun 90 degrees. 
So perhaps Miss Louisa Frierson was the first Tom Bigby tale teller in Columbus. If you'd like to know more about the homes in Columbus, we encourage you to come to the spring pilgrimage April 2nd through the 13th. Or you can look at historichomes.tours and find out more about the beautiful homes in our town. You can also look on our Columbus Library's site at the Lowndes County Public Library. And if all else fails, you can listen to more events in the Tom Bigby Tales about some of the homes and the people who live here. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And until next time, I'm Shannon Evans.